okay. I don't know how this is gonna work. <clears throat> yeah, let's see what happens. All right, we'll see how this sounds. Uh, so I realized I didn't catch you all up on uh, on my latest hunting trip. Uh, spoiler alert: it was successful. And that was about it, actually. All right. Good talk, guys. Uh, glad you showed up. Uh, bike vomit describe, and uh, don't forget to click all my affiliate links uh, all over the internet. And uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I went out on that horrendously inconvenient day at that particularly inconvenient time during incredibly inclement weather and uh, had no problems. The weather was perfect, actually. And it had been raining and storming uh, in Lexington. and This place is about maybe 20 minutes out of Lexington. So, this is a bit better. It's about 20 minutes outside of Lexington, so it was... Uh, I was able to... You know, it's not that far off. But it was still pretty stormy in Lexington, but over there it was perfect. The weather was good. Uh, things were dry. I didn't get soaking wet. Didn't need the poncho. It was just, it was fine. <laughs> it was good. Uh, in fact, if anything, it was a bit warm. So, uh, <clears throat> went out on the same areas that I had been on. Uh, didn't find anything. Didn't see any squirrels didn't hear any squirrels, uh, walked down a few other different areas. I spent most of my time pushing through the, the growth that had sprung up from all the, the recent rains. So the ground was kind of soggy in some spots, but it was fine. Um, <clears throat> so I, I had kind of, I just kind of was wandering around. I did manage to see, I did see one squirrel and uh, I took a shot at him, and I called it a hit, but I called the other ones hits too. And they were not hit, and that one was not a hit. Then I kind of waded into, uh, kind of off the trail, looking around the tree to find it. And I saw it again, and tried to follow it a bit more, and it, it just kind of disappeared into the upper canopy. So I'm like, alright, at least I saw one squirrel. <laughs> it's better than nothing. Um, so I went further, went went deeper into the woods there, and found another clearing, and it was really pretty. I, I had never been there in that area, that part of that area, so it was really nice. Um, but I started the, the trek back. <laughs> now, it was mostly downhill there, so it was all uphill, and I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't soaked from the water, from the rain. <laughs> I was soaked with sweat, because <laughs> it was just that, it was that hot, and it was hard hiking out and all around. So I decided to try something different and got back in the car and drove to a different section of the, the area. <clears throat> and then just kind of kept an eye on clearings. Saw a few rabbits. I actually didn't see any deer this time. Uh, I'm pretty sure I heard one though. Uh, but I did see a lot of chipmunks. So still pretty sparse. I wandered off into a new area that I hadn't been before and I was just kind of walking through this field area. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, after I had missed that shot, I took a quick break and did some uh, target shooting and I felt like I was hitting, I felt like my point of impact was higher than, uh, higher than my front sight. So I started kind of compensating by aiming a little low. Not really sure what I could have done to the rifle you know, maybe I, I winged the sights or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, but it looked like it was on uh, for windage, but it, I just had to aim a little bit lower, which doesn't actually make sense for my, my sights because my sights are a bit tall, but whatever. So I, I kind of adjusted. Uh, so I went walking into a new area, and there was just kind of a field, and I was just walking along in the field, and then I heard the, I heard the like, chuck, chuck sound, and I'm like, that sounds a bit, there's a bird that sounds kind of like squirrels. Um, but this one sounded a little different. So I just stopped where I was standing and looked around and like, like uh, 20 or 30 feet 
to my left through this, you know, brush that was about four feet tall and then some tree, uh, uh, I forget if it's called a hammock or a hummock of, hammock of trees uh, along a, a property line or along a, a I guess a separating line. Uh, there was like branches and everything was kind of open where there was, I could just barely, I could see right through this portal. It was like I had a, a little window through the trees straight at the trunk of a tree and I saw straight in the middle, <laughs> like in the middle of a bullseye, that squirrel. And he was sitting there and I had him totally, I was completely behind him, had him, I was uh, basically spread eagle against there, the biggest target I could possibly have. And I'm like, I don't even have to aim high or low, I'm just going to aim boiler room. And took my shot and I, call, I, you know, I called it a hit, just like I called all the other ones hits. I'm just off with this, I don't know what's going on. But uh, he disappeared, you know, as soon as I made the shot, he kind of disappeared. And I felt like he dropped low. And I'm not sure, I don't know. I felt like I, I felt like I was, I, I was almost positive I got him. So the next question was, how do I get there <laughs> after I get, get that shot? So I start wading into these uh, four, four feet of brush that's just like... Uh, uh, thorns and that was the other thing I, I wasn't positive I got the hit because I had that like bullseye that very limited visibility on him uh, I could see him but I couldn't see like a foot to the left of him so that's why he just kind of disappeared um, so I'm like wading through this this brush and it's uh, intermittent thorn bushes and all kinds of nastiness and I'm just like trying to figure out how to you know swim my way through it without thorns just raking my legs <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it was a it was a big pain but I finally made it close enough and then as I got closer there was another tree that was in front of it I had to work my way around it and as I did I realized that there was a fence right there and uh, you know it was barbed wire there, there's a lot of these areas that they don't want you crossing particularly like technically you're allowed to go wherever in that area that wildlife area but they have some areas that have uh, fences across them and you know it might be it might be dangerous or they might just want to preserve that section so they don't want a bunch of people making trails through it but I, I ran into the fence and uh, had barbed wire on top of it I'm like I can't believe this so I, I weighed my way back and as it was I like came out and there was this kind of border area and I walked this way and I walked into that area and ran into the fence. So I counted my footsteps back this way, came across, and then counted my footsteps back, and I identified the tree and made my way there. That was a lot easier. There wasn't four foot of brush. It was much less and much fewer thorns. So I get to the tree, I go, there's still a lot of brush around, and I don't, like, I don't have a machete or anything like that. So I'm just like kind of swimming through the brush and moving it around and trying to look at the ground. I don't see any blood where I took the shot. I'm like, I can't believe this. I, I must have missed him because there's no blood there. And I, I look over, looking around the bottom, and while I'm looking around the bottom, I hear another chuck, chuck, chuck. And I look over, and there's another tree 20 feet away from me. And there's another gray squirrel just kind of working his way up. And he actually, all the trees there, for whatever reason, are covered in these, like, I don't know if they're, they're like vines or if they're outgrowths of the tree because the trunks are so covered. But they're covered in these, like, three to four inch um, thorns. Like seriously, like if I tripped and fell into one of those tree trunks, I would probably need medical attention. Like I would call 911 to come get me. It would be that bad. Uh, but I've never seen something like that before. But this, this tree was also covered in those thorns. And the squirrel was like in the process of, you know, carefully working his way around those thorns. Uh, still pretty quick but he kind of went around to opposite uh, opposite side of the tree which is usually what they do and as he went around to the opposite side of the tree I could see I could see it was his his body disappear and I saw a little pook like a little a little darker bump of what I assumed was his head sticking out just like eyeballing me just so he could see me but still be mostly covered well uh, he was he was not mostly covered so I, I took my shot, I aimed a little bit low, put my sights a little bit lower on him, and took the shot, and it was a solid hit. I could see that it hit. 
Uh, he did a, like, jumped up into the tree area and then kind of flipped around and hung onto one of the branches before falling to the ground. And, uh, I was like, I did it. Okay. Now to make my way over to that tree. <laughs> so a little bit more brush, you know, a little bit more bushwhacking to get to that tree. And there he was. And I've got the picture up on my, my Twitter. Um... But it was a solid shot. It was, I guess, I don't know if he, I don't know if I was seeing the wrong part. I think perhaps I saw like his shoulder or the back of him sticking out and that maybe wasn't his head. That might've explained why I didn't see an eye. Cause usually the eye reflects light enough that you can see, you know, an eyeball poking back at you. Uh, and his head was pretty gray too. I don't know. Uh, but the shot went in on, uh, I guess it was at a different angle, yeah. It went in at the, the low neck and came out shoulder side and basically just tore up the right shoulder. Uh, but crazy exit wound. But it was a solid hit. Uh, technically not boiler room and technically not head, but it was where it was. Uh, actually, you know, thinking about it now, As, as I replay this in my head and set up the, you know, the, the orientation of that squirrel, it seems pretty likely that the shot was dead on with the front sight. Yeah, and that, that lower area was probably his shoulder. That's probably exactly where I hit. So his head probably poked up, and I, maybe I did see that as his head. Uh, it was in the shade of the tree, so it was, you know, the leaves of the tree, so it was kind of hard to see. Uh, but I could definitely see the, the motion and the movement where he ran right up there. So I don't know, maybe that sight is just dead on and I'm just, I'm flinching hard or something. It's, I should probably put like a couple thousand rounds through, through that thing. And give it an afternoon or something like that at the range. That'll be, that'll be fun. That's always good therapy. Anyways, uh, hit him, definitely hit him. He dropped to the ground. I bush my, bushwhacked my way over there and found him. Took my took a picture. Uh, said a nice little, short little prayer, and carried him out. And uh, it was strange. I guess I never uh, handled anything that was alive and now dead, you know, aside from <laughs> animal parts on foam, uh, foam plastic trays, uh, but it was, uh, it was a strange feeling to pick up that, that squirrel and have it still be warm and just be so, uh, vacant, just, just empty. And it, you know, uh, complete ragdoll. It was, uh, it was very strange, and uh, I can, I can feel it in my hand right now. And uh, I don't know. I'm a, bit, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a. a Let's see. I'm a I'm a very empathetic person, uh, and I'm a bit of an emotional person, I think. <laughs> uh, and it uh, yeah, left a mark. I, I I mean, it was a. I'm not like scarred for life or anything like that, but I'll you I'll uh, I'll remember that. I don't think I'll forget it. Um, but I took him back to the car hiked, you know, back up, uh, and did a, the, a very terrible job of field dressing him, uh, got the pelt, uh, got him down to a, a field dress, held on to the liver and kidneys, heart looked weird, so I, I skipped it, um, uh, drove home, cleaned him up, cooked him up, in some uh, some bacon grease, it tasted great, and my daughter even liked it. 
my son didn't want to eat anything, any meat. <clears throat> He's getting kind of picky. Uh, my wife wasn't interested. <clears throat> but my daughter liked it. And it did taste good. So, figure out what to do with the pelt. But, uh, success. You know, it, it just took a lot of time and effort. And, uh, a bit of failure. But, worth it. That's it.